good morning from a bus stop in Long Rock. So today I'm gonna try to uh, do the 14 miles. I might be crazy, I might give up. Um, I do have an out at about nine miles. So if I decided I just don't wanna do it, I can fail at that point and catch a bus. Um, but in order to make this, like give myself the most time, I'm actually gonna start um, in Lizard or Cayenne's Cove technically, because I've already done Cayenne's Cove to live Lizard like uh, several years ago. So I'm gonna start in Cayenne's Cove, but you have to walk down like a mile and a quarter from the main road where the bus drops off. And then from Cayenne's Cove, um, there's like, I think it's like five miles to the first like Mullen Cove or something like that. And then it's like another couple of miles to like Holdu Cove. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and that would be that would be my bailout at like nine miles. Um, and then it's another five miles to Port Levin where I was yesterday. So if I make it the whole way, I'll get back to Port Levin. Port Levin has buses that come back at like you know seven, eight. 9, 10 o'clock at night. Um, so I have a lot of time, even though I'm not going to get to Cayenne's Cove until like 10 in the morning, like it's 7 right now. Um, I would have like enough time, like I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to catch like a 4 o'clock bus or something. If I started in Cayenne's Cove, I could get there by like 8, but I would have to like be able to get to the end by 4.30 because that's the last bus back. So this just gives me a lot more time to work with. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far I get. This juice box that my hotel gave me has a paper straw and I'm so infuriated by it right now, but I can't drink this any other way. So here we are. I have so many questions. Well, I made it to Halston. Just hopped off the bus and I'm just about to get on another one. And I look at our gutter system. Like seems very old school, but clearly effective. So I'm actually really glad to be uh, doing the buses the way I'm doing them because the um, the bus I was supposed to get on was supposed to come at 8, 8.13 and it's not showing up on the arrivals board. Like it, there's this board. There that tells you what buses are coming next. And uh, it's the one I was supposed to take. It's definitely not on it. Um, there's one 15 minutes later, so it's fine. Or 20 minutes, but it's fine. But according to the bus schedule, there's one in a 13. And according to that board, there isn't. So unless it just shows up randomly in the next three minutes, like there's no bus. Which means that something like this could happen on the way back. And since there's so few buses that go out to this peninsula, um, at, like at the end of the day, like I could have been stuck. So it's better for me to have these bus snafus at the beginning of the day and not at the end. So hopefully this just means that everything from here on out will run smoothly. Hey, I made it to Cayenne's Cove or at least the invisible bus stop at the top of Cayenne's Cove. So it's like a mile, it's like a mile and a quarter um, from here to the actual cove. So I'm gonna go walk and try not to get hit by a car. I'm pretty sure that's the pathway I took last time because I remember it was like in between all these hedges and stuff. And I walked all the way down, walking over my first cattle grate of this trip. Okay, this I remember. I've definitely been here before. I remember walking on this road, walking by those like buildings. That's cool. It was six years ago. But, and I was like a baby traveler at that point. Like, <clears throat> England was the first country I was coming to that I hadn't spent a lot of time in by myself. Like, and I remember I was just loving my time in Cornwall. It was so warm. It felt like the Mediterranean. I was not wearing a coat and like a thing and layers of <laughs> uh, bright blue skies, not whatever that is. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, it was like such a good experience. And even if the weather is, you know, different and you can't re remake that like first experience magic and all that stuff, like it's still really cool to be back <sighs> and to be walking amongst the purple heather. And no freaking ferns. So here we are. I walked out from past there on the road. And now I'm here and I'm gonna do, 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 do. Follow that. The first checkpoint is Mullen Cove, which is four and a quarter miles. It's beautiful. And this is why they call it the lizard. The rocks are supposed to look like lizard skin. I don't think they do a ton. I mean, a little bit maybe. They're like this greenish color. That is why it's called the lizard. So you can see the lizard skin a little bit better here. It's a cleaner rock. I'm pretty sure the picture I have of myself from six years ago is standing right over there with that at my back. But now it's like roped off so you can't go over there. Also, I remember looking at that like stairway and thinking, oh my God, that's so steep. There's so many stairs. Now I'm like, I laugh in the face of that, that's easy. Okay, let's go up these stairs. How blue the water is, like, well, it's not picking it up that well on the screen, but that little tinge of blue you can see in that pool is like twice as bright in real life. And the water itself. Eh, it's picking it up a little bit, but it's like twice as bright in real life. And it would be even brighter if it was sunny. Well, from the last sign to this sign, apparently we added three-fourths of a mile to uh, Mullen Cove, but mm, whatever. That's one of those loud Cornish birds. There. Crows. That looks like a fluffy cow. It's not very fluffy. You can kind of see Lizard Point. That little bit that's sticking out. Right there. I think that's it interesting that like Land's End makes such a big idea like big thing about being like oh the southern end of Britain blah 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 and like it is really far south but Lizard's technically the southernmost point um and there's like not even a sign at the actual end like there's one in the little village of Lizard which is in Tennessee uh, wait, maybe you can't. There we go. There. So it's in a little bit from the actual point, but I always find that to be kind of funny. Um, meh. There's some more cows that are chilling. The black ones. And there's like a couple of bigger one, like ones that are a little furrier. I don't have horns. Well, the heathland was lovely while it lasted, but I am, here's bushes and grass lands again. So let's see how much more bushes, how many more, how more enclosed it gets, let's put it that way. Fingers crossed, not very, but I think that that's unlikely. I think it's just gonna get more and more enclosed as I go on. Still very pretty though. Well, so I have two more miles to go to Mullen Cove, and a quarter of a mile to what this Agador is. I think that's Mullen Cove, that little beach area you can kind of see right there. And then that might be Odoo or whatever it's called makes that Port Lemon. So this sleepy little fishing port is a uh, Port Melon. I think is how you say it. It's super cute. So that means we're a half a mile or so to uh, Mullen Cove, which I believe is just over this headland. So 
not too far. When I ran into my like random American friends from yesterday, um, like obviously going the other direction, they were like, what are you doing? Why are you going the same direction as us? So I could kind of explain the whole like, give myself more time with the bus thing. So I was going this way. And um, so we just kind of exchanged notes about the path, you know, let, let each other know how many more big dips there are. Uh, you know, like this is a big dip. Uh, so it was nice. Uh, and I also saw like these two other women that um, I had been behind yesterday for uh, like the last maybe like four miles and I just passed them too. So it kind of makes me feel like I'm on the right track. Like I'm about a third of the way done with the hike and they were probably about two thirds done, but I started at like 10. And if they had gotten up and started at eight, then that would put us kind of on par with each other. So I feel like I'm keeping up, even if I'm going the opposite direction. Okay, gotta get through this business now. Hey, this is also Lillian Cove. They're the same thing. Who'd have thought? I don't know. At least that's what my map is saying. It's confusing. Okay, onward to whatever is next. There's people swimming in this water and like they're not in wetsuits they're just in bathing suits like all the more power to them but i'm cold and i'm wearing this <laughs> and i'm hiking so uh mm -hmm. like you do you i guess i i could never i would like forget to breathe but i think this bench here Thanks, Lee Randall. Um, is gonna be lunch. This is the view from lunch. Not bad on it. Well, a little under two miles to Polder Cove. It's my like last bail point before I run out of buses, and I have a five-mile hike from there to Fort Levin, according to my map. Which means I have just under seven miles total. So I do the whole thing. So. We shall see. Caragoos. Love Rock. I'm not sure why it's called that, but there you go. Love Rock. Check out this fancy path. Oop, that was a bump. I'm sure it'll end soon, but still. Okay, it's about a mile to the next cove. Lovely. The sky is a little blue in this direction now. Sort of a memorial statue. There used to be a signal tower not too far from here. And that was like in charge of sending the first signal across to the like electric signal, not electric signal, uh, transmission, across, wireless tel telegraphy. Oh, Morse code, like the first, like, da -da -da -da, across the Poor lifeguard. It's like must be so cold and hoping that people don't go in the water. Watch this. His rock skipping game is like amazing. I saw him do like seven skips earlier. Okay, he's not doing it as well, but it was great before. Such a cute little beach. <clears throat> Actually, when I came through here in 2018, I remember on the bus, the bus goes right over there. And I remember being like, oh, that's such a cute, pretty cove. And like, if I had more time, I'd come back here. And I'd have myself thinking that again, I had more time, I'd come hang out here, but that's nice. I'm glad I walked through. I think I am gonna attempt, it's like 5.7 miles more. I'm feeling good, it's like 2.15. I just had a coffee, so. <clears throat> You know, even if it takes me to like six, I still have plenty of buses and there's like food and stuff in Port Levin. So I can just grab food there. Like I don't have to worry about being back at a certain time. So I think I'm gonna push through. Okay, <clears throat> so here's where we are. Right there, I just have my coffee. And I'm gonna do that. So I think this is implying that from here, it's four miles. So I think my five points, 
Oh, sorry, I just cut you off from here. It's four miles. So my 5.7 seems to make sense. Cool. Oh, it says that Port Flavin is three and a half miles. I mean, if that's true, I'll take it. That would be perfect. We'll find out. Well, I'm almost positive it's not the Port Flavin. So this, and this bed over here to walk. Not terrible, not terrible at all. Look at all the colors of the water. And I can see more with my eye than I can pick up on my camera, but so cool. Getting closer, two and a quarter miles. This direction. Well, I've made it to Lou Bar or Low Bar. I don't know. It's like L O O E. I don't know how to pronounce it. But it apparently, it's a giant sandbar that separates that body of water from the sea. I don't know if it ever floods over, but I suspect it might. Probably not often, though. Here we go, Port Levin, one mile. Okay. These gators are really helping me with the sand issue, but. And I hate squishy sand. It's like, also like kind of pebbly too. It's interesting, it's not little sand, but it's so annoying. So hard to walk, okay? So that was easily my least favorite part of today's walk, but it is pretty. It says that there's no bathing at that sign, meaning like don't go swimming. Apparently there's like strong undercurrents and a deep shelf that drops off and all these different things that could kill you in the water, so don't do it. Thankfully, people seem to be listening, so that's good. Okay, a little less than a mile. Let's go. There it is. Car 11. Back again. And that means that everything you can see is way out of that direction and more than land that direction because you can't see the final bit of the peninsula. I've hiked, except for this teeny little stretch between here and that village. Also, much, much more in that direction than you can see. Like a hundred miles more. It's kind of wild. Okay, I've officially made it to town. There's one of the piers. I think I'm gonna dip down there and put my feet in the water. So much squishy little dogs, but so This dog has adopted me. He's just like parked himself right next to me. Hi, what's up? Why don't you go treat yourself? Okay, I had a nice early dinner. I drink. Um, and I think I'm just in time for the six o'clock bus. It's like 5.54. So let's see. That'll be perfect. I can go back. And settle in for the night. <clears throat> so I was right, the bus is gonna come in just a few minutes, but I was thinking today was a really good day. Like I did a little more mileage than yesterday, a, like a hundred feet less of elevation, so it's like it's kind of a wash, but I'm just like so much more chill, so much more relaxed. I think it was just like the type of hiking. Like it was just open and not like smothered with plants and stuff, so that was a good day. It almost feels like the last day of a vacation because I'm leaving Cornwall tomorrow and I love Cornwall, but hopefully North Devon will be just as pleasant and all the other places I'm going on this trip in the next three weeks will be lovely as well. But <sighs> say goodbye to Cornwall for the, for the year.